Action. The name of the film is Through the Uncanny Valley. The Uncanny Valley is a, it was an original uh, robotics term. Um, it can be used in a broader scope now, but it's essentially robots can be, or any kind of artificial intelligence can be molded to look like us, act like us uh, in a lot of ways, but there will always be that one small detail that we will register and be utterly repulsed by. And uh, I thought it could be used in a literal sense and in a figurative sense um, in the scope of a relationship, which is something that I feel is universal. Can I move the desk instead? Uh, no, I know, I just moved no. it, but uh, I wanted to write something that was kind of soft into the future. We couldn't really put a time or place on it and, and uh, have have the audience guess it as uh, the type of technology we were talking about in, in regards to the emotions that we were feeling, hopefully. Right. I mean, that's that's the thing. I mean, you, you know, then maybe you sleep like the dead like I do. I mean, that's a real luxury. She had it first. First. Cut, circle that. Uh, the male lead for Through the Uncanny Valley is Martin Cummings. And, uh. <laughs> I knew it when I saw him. Yeah. I knew it when I saw him. I walked into <laughs> the coffee shop and he was there. And I, uh. I didn't. The, the conversation thereafter was a formality, really. He was. Had the right mannerisms and the look, and he uh, talked about the project with. I didn't even have to ask him anything really about it. He was just into it right away from reading it, and um, it was just some of his mannerisms, the way he said certain words, and certain tension that he had, and and then also relaxation in other areas too. And I just I knew it was the guy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he has he's got it going on. Love that guy. I think about characters um, with almost faceless, and uh, I think about a lot of detail. So what they're, how they dress, um, what kind of posture they have, um, and then it sort of fills the frame with the person when I see them. And I don't like auditions. I don't like auditioning actors. It's uncomfortable for everyone. <laughs> So, uh, you don't get a lot of truth out of it. Um, it's I, I, So, my process has always been, and I think will continue to be, let's sit down and have a drink. Let's go out for dinner somewhere and just talk like people. <laughs> Lara Rova plays the female lead, and she uh, does a lot with the look. She is a phenomenal performance, I thought, and she was given a lot, I think lesser actresses would have been, we need more lines, we need something more to say, and uh, she didn't say that, and I knew that from the beginning, she got very um, specific about the script that she had read, and she knew what she wanted to do, we had very in-depth conversations about it, and <laughs> she was a real pleasure and my it was a it was a pleasure of mine to walk watch her do it and give her the the emotional safety and um, a place to make mistakes and just to do it again and again until we got it and she was as a, a real soldier through through the course of the of the shooting Can you feel it? Can you feel it? crossing that should be able to yeah yeah, yeah. And just when you're walking close together, it's just like a little confrontational, but it's, it's a little bit more natural. And you find your spot and be solid when you're standing. Yeah. yeah. And he's kind of back off so this yeah. way. That's awesome. Okay. All right. Back to first position, please. I think he's sort of bewildered by what he sees in front of him. Um, it's like that novelty that you feel when you buy a new car or a new book or you go sh clothes shopping and the first time you put the clothes on and then, you know, you cut to yourself six months later and you're wearing those clothes and it, I mean, the, that sort of 
shimmer is gleamed off of it a little bit, and uh, you know that happens in relationships too. And yeah. So uh, it's just part of its novelty, and it's very chemical dependent, and it's human. Um, and so the the arc of the characters begins in that way, where everything is kind of you're discovering it for the first time, and um, it's magical and raw, and uh, then eventually it comes with responsibilities and maintenance and. <laughs> you know, and so the, the hard part, really, the work that's re required, and so that's the the question you have to ask yourself: is is the addiction worth the work? And it took some risks. It was interesting because uh, they're quite physical with each other through the course of the film. And they hadn't met each other before. They didn't work together professionally or anything like that. They weren't even friends until they, we were introduced them through the through their first readings and clothes fittings and stuff like that. Um, I had them rehearsing some of the physical stuff so that we were when we were on the day it wasn't too confusing and time consuming for everyone. I didn't meet him until about probably six months before the uh, shoot took place. And I had heard about him through a good friend of mine and she introduced us and I kind of got a strong vibe from him right away. He was someone who was uh, driven and interesting and uh, he, we spoke the same language almost right off the bat and so uh, I was pretty excited to hear what he had to say about wanting to or not work with the show that I had written and fortunately enough for me he was interested. Most of the time on set I didn't have to say much other than this here, that, remember that shot we were talking about? Yeah, this is that moment and uh, he knew it right away. Keep the smoke going, that's great. And right. Action. Just really strong dedication and creativity and it fuels me. It, I was insulated in a, in a very um, fortunate way and I was given probably the greatest creative freedom of my life working on this project with Red Castle. So. Action. Fantasy a Monthly called her as playful as luxury engineering gets. <laughs> you know me, I buy you wanted for myself right in front of you. Oh, I'm all in already. I mean, really, we were never in a goddamn position you could possibly imagine. Right. Right, and then maybe you'd sleep like the dead like I do. I mean, that's a real luxury. Now she had me for a second. For a second. Yeah, they were fantastic. Uh, it, it was a great lesson for me to just know when to um, allow people to bring what's important to them uh, creatively to a project that I might not have thought about, uh, and then when to give them a direction, and, and that's really the job. So, it's how do you shoot these things? Everyone has these strong um, enthusiasms. Um, and how do you make it work? And th there's no real trick to it, I don't think. It's you hire the right people, the right cre sense of creativity that are interested in your in your project, and you let them bring things and ideas and notions to the table that you might not have otherwise thought of. These are the people that I've been looking for since moving here and uh, rekindling my film career, for sure.